Today we are going to begin this lesson by trying to understand a number of important concepts by questioning phenomena that happen around us on a day-to-day -day basis. I want to begin by asking a simple question which will be the starting point to this chapter. What is light? This might seem like a simple question but has actually baffled scientists for centuries. Some properties of light are better described as a wave where other pro properties are better described as a particle. To begin, we will first focus on the wave-like properties of light. Light is electromagnetic radiation, which is a type of energy that is composed of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. In a vacuum, these waves are moving at a constant speed of 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Some of you may be familiar with the delay between when you can see and hear a lightning strike. Well, this is due to the fact that light travels nearly a million times faster than sound. So the flash of the lightning reaches your eyes before the sound does. To describe a wave, we need to first go over some key terms. A wave is characterized by its amplitude and wavelength. Amplitude is the vertical height of a crest, which determines how intense or bright a light is. So the greater the amplitude, the greater the intensity will be. Wavelength, which is denoted by lambda, is the distance between adjacent crests. It is important to note that wavelength has units of meters, which can be accompanied by a unit prefix such as micro or nano. Light is also characterized by its frequency, which is denoted by nu, which is the number of wave crests that passes through a single point per second. The units for frequency is inverse seconds, or it is also more commonly referred to as a hertz. The speed of light is proportional to the frequency and wavelength, and the formula is as followed. C is equal to the speed of light, which is equal to wavelength times nu. We will use this equation to convert between wavelength and frequency. It is also important to note that wavelength and frequency represent different ways of specifying the same information. If you know one, you can calculate the other by rearranging the equation. The electromagnetic spectrum includes all wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation. High frequency, high energy waves are on the right of the spectrum and on the left is low frequency and low energy. So a little bit about each portion of this spectrum. We're going to first begin with the high energy radiation, which are known as gamma rays. Gamma rays are naturally produced, but too much exposure can be dangerous. I am not saying you will turn into the Hulk, but these rays can damage biological molecules. X-rays should be familiar to us because they are readily used for a number of medical purposes. Most of us know ultraviolet radiation as a component of sunlight that causes suntans. However, most of us do know it uh, more in the sense of causing sunburn. So it is probably very important for you to apply that sunblock prior to going out into the sun, especially on a cloudy day. Visible light is the only section that the human eye can actually visualize. The next part of the spectrum is infrared, which is the radiation that is emitted from a hot or warm object. Microwaves are used for radar and in microwave ovens. The last part on the spectrum are radio waves. These are the longest wavelengths on the spectrum. And these are commonly used to transmit signals such as FM, AM radios, and also your cell phones are also transmitted across these frequencies. Hopefully today's lesson was insightful and also relatable at the same time. Thank you. Come and see it all.